St. Mary's, and welcome to Storytime with Mrs. G. I hope you guys have all had a really, 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 really fun weekend. Did any of, uh, if, did any of you do the virtual steeplechase? Um, I didn't, but that's okay. Uh, what I did do is on Sunday, I did a quarantine quilt along. And it was great fun. That's why I have my quilting shirt on, quilting with friends. And um, it was a lot of fun. Maybe sometime I'll, I just have pieces. Um, but maybe in one of these shows, when I get it done, I will display it for you. So today, our story is Too Many Frogs, written by Sandy Asher and illustrated by Keith Graves. Rabbit lived by himself in the hollow of an old tree. He cooked for himself, he tidied up after himself, and at the end of each and every day, he read himself a story. No fuss, no clutter, and Rabbit liked it. But one day, one rainy evening, he heard a on his door. It's froggy, croaked a deep voice. Don't care for the storm. Rabbit opened the door. I was about to read myself a story. Love to listen. Foggy cried and hopped right in. Don't mind, do ya? No, I suppose not, Rabbit said. So, Froggy listened while Rabbit read his story. Well done. She cheered when Rabbit had finished. Storms ended too. Thanks for your kindness. Toodly do. I think the frog voice is going to leave now. The next evening, as usual, Rabbit finished his dinner, tidied up, and sat down to read himself a story. But before he could begin, he heard another at his door. It's froggy croaked the same deep voice, and Rabbit opened the door. I was about to read myself a story. I know, Froggy cried and hopped right on in. Love to listen, but first, let's fix ourselves a snack for three. Don't mind, do ya? Well, I suppose not, said Rabbit. So Froggy hopped and popped and whipped and flipped and mixed and fix a snack or three. Too much fuss, Rabbit thought. But Froggy listened while Rabbit read his story. Well done. He cheered when Rabbit had finished. Snack's gone too. Thanks for your kindness. Toodle do. The next evening, Rabbit finished dinner, tidied up, sat down to read himself a story. But before he could begin, there was that all oh, at his door. Ah, it's froggy, croaked the familiar voice, and Rabbit opened the door. I was about to read, he began. I know, froggy croaked and hopped right in. About to read yourself a story, love to listen. But first, let's get ourselves all comfy, cozy. Don't you mind? Don't mind, do you? Well, I suppose not," said Rabbit. So Froggy clucked and puffed and mushed and smushed and piled up billion billows of pillows. Too much clutter, Rabbit thought. But Froggy listened while Rabbit read his story. Well done. He cheered when Rabbit had finished bedtime, too. Thanks for your kindness. Toodle do. The next evening, Rabbit finished dinner, tidied up, and sat down to read himself a story. But before he could begin, there was that. It's froggy. Rabbit opened the door. I know. Froggy cried before Rabbit could say a single word. You were about to read yourself a story. Love to listen, but first meet the family, then tell them all about you and your stories. Love to join us. Don't mind, do you? And Rabbit looked at Froggy's family. 
big frogs, little frogs, dozens and dozens, all wearing t-shirts. Frog family reunion. Too many frogs, he thought. Too much clutter. Too much fuss. But I do mind. Froggy, he said at last. You do? Froggy asked. I never invited you in, Rabbit explained. I never invited you to fix the stack. I never invited you to get all comfy cozy, and I never invited your family to join you. So I do mind very much. Oh, croaked Froggy. This one that will do. Thanks for your kindness. Toodle do. At last, Froggy sat down to read himself a story. For one anxious moment, he waited for a knock, knock, knock at his door. It never came. Don't you, don't mind, do you? He asked himself with a chuckle. Oh, most certainly not, he answered, and began to read. It was a great story. But something was missing. Snacks make a good story better, he thought. So he fixed himself a snack and read on. It was very, very good. But something was missing. Pillows make a story, good story better, he thought. So he fluffed himself a pillow and read on, and it was an exceptionally good story. But something was still missing. Rabbit blinked once. He blinked twice. And then he sighed. It's foggy, he told himself at last. He loves to listen. Then Rabbit opened his door, and there sat Froggy and his family waiting patiently to say they were sorry. Never meant to be rude, Froggy said. Brought you a t-shirt. Frog family reunion. Well, thank you, Rabbit said. I was about to read a story. Would you like to join me? Love to listen, cried the frogs. And... They all hopped in, big frogs and little frogs and dozens and dozens, and Rabbit offered them a snack or three and helped them fluff their pillows. And then every frog listened while Rabbit read the story. Well done, they cheered when they had finished. So many frogs, Rabbit thought, so much fuss, so much clutter, and it was a different way of life, and Rabbit liked it. The end. So, boys and girls, we are in a situation that's a different way of life for all of us, too. Right now, in this day and age, these frogs are not social distancing. So, I'm going to end the story tonight saying, make the best of your different way of life and remember to social distance. That's our story for today, and I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.